Okay. Um, here's a theorem. Let's see if we can prove this. If um, another good start. F of X converges at X. These are all real functions. F of X converges at X naught. If and only if and F of course is defined on some uh, subset of the reals and goes back to the real function. F converges to X naught if and only if for all sequences Xn with uh, Xn not equal x. F of xn say this the right way. The, the shorthand way of saying this is sequential convergence and regular convergence. statement, so there's always two parts to it. This, this is a very fundamental property of the real numbers, sequential convergence and convergence, arbitrary convergence, are equivalent. In other words, you can detect continuity and limits using only sequences. I forget, we used to use a book, an analysis book, where all the convergence definitions were phrased in terms of sequences. Um, that wasn't Wade, and it was probably before Wade. But then when you get to grad school and say, geez, uh, that's not the way I learned it. The reason, the reason is there are fundamental definitions that have to do with convergence. And of, of functions. 
sequences of functions here and, and uh, the fundamental definitions that uh, have to do with uh, convergence of the F here problem. So functional convergence and sequ sequ sequential convergence are the same. Because of the theorem. So uh, how, how should we put this? Well, maybe the easiest direction is to start off at uh, in this, this direction. If f of x converges, then, uh, then, every, then every sequence that converges to x naught has to subtract it. Okay, so the f of x naughts have to, the, the f of x n's have to be closer and closer to f of x naught. Okay? Alright, so how would we, how would we show that? Well, what's, what is the statement that f of x converges to x1? Given, given epsilon, reassign epsilon, uh, there exists uh, a delta of epsilon such that whenever uh, we're sufficiently close in absolute value to x0, that forces the corresponding closeness of uh, the function values. So if x and x naught are delta close, then f of x and f of x naught are epsilon close. So this is just a recap of what it means for f of x to converge in x naught. We get close to x naught and do those things. Uh, actually, actually, it, this is I assume too much of this is assuming that it's continuous. If I don't want to assume it's continuous, what can I do? There's some limit that I get close to. There's a limit as x goes to x, right? If I let the limit be f of x naught, I'm just assuming that it's continuous. Which is fine. If I, if I know in advance, I'm, I'm trying to detect continuity, then, then uh, putting f of x naught in there would be fine, and then, and then I would do the same with the sequences. All right. So, uh, how does that force every sequence that converges to x naught to pull the f of x ends with it to converge? Well, let uh, x n converge to x naught. Okay. Then what? There exists for fixed epsilon, which coincidentally will be the one that I picked up here. For that epsilon, there exists not a delta this time, but a capital N of epsilon. Right? Such that what? Whenever we go far enough out of the sequence past that magic N, that depends, of course, on it. What happens? F of x n and the limit we're talking about less than epsilon. I'm oh, sorry. Let me refocus. That's uh, a jump way in. Uh, what, what does it mean? It means. Uh, Is that minus x one? Well, wait a minute. I don't want to make this epsilon. I want to make this delta of epsilon for this purpose, right? So if I pick the delta, I can go far enough out so that x minus x naught absolutely is less than the delta of epsilon. That's what I want to do, right? So I uh, started out with a fixed epsilon. I got the delta. And uh, now I export that delta to the definition of convergence of the sequence xn. And I find the capital N of epsilon, so that if I go past that, the xn terms differ from x0 absolutely by less than delta of epsilon. OK, I think I got it. Does this look OK? No. All right. So, uh, 
claim then is what? If n is greater than n of epsilon, then this is what I wrote down rather prematurely, f of x n minus l is less than epsilon. But doesn't that follow immediately? If I'm greater here, then um, xn is within delta of x naught. And if I'm within delta, if I'm within delta of x naught, then f of x is within epsilon of l. That's, that's all I'm claiming. 